Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today's January 30th, 2023. A little bit late to the stream this morning. Sorry about that. It's Monday. I got a bit of the Mondays going on right now. Lots of stuff going on. But it's all good because today we're going to get into uh, painting this tiger. Uh, probably, well, not probably. We're going to start with the background first. We're going to work on the jungle. And what I'm going to do is I've already separated our tiger on the front layer and outlined him out. But before I start on the background layer of the jungle, I'm going to um, looking for my reference images while I'm talking to you. There it is. So I'm going to separate out uh, the palm frond as well that we drew out. We have our little palette up here that we pulled from our Uh, design process. So I'm going to keep that on the screen. Make sure that I continually reference that as much as I can. The great thing about Krita is I could create a palette within Krita as well. Uh, and I might show you how to do that because I, you know, it's something I've really never played with. I have a palette here that I use on a daily basis for when I'm kind of um, marking up my notes and stuff like that. But for the most part, I don't use it except maybe up here with the color selector to select maybe a color that I've already selected before. But let's do this. Let's hit S for our selection tool, our freehand selection tool. And we're gonna work on selecting this palm frond, the top one first. And my drawing's not perfectly exact, but that's okay. I'm going to introduce a lot of kind of variation into it. And that's fine. And the selection's really off, but I'm doing that intentionally right now. Let me create a new layer. This is one thing that I kind of like to train myself in is getting better at making these selections. So I can hit plus and I can add in this one leaf of the palm frond. And then alt is a minus, so I can take out that little bit. So plus and minus is what we'll use. And all you have to do is remember what is the inside and what is the outside. Right, what is the selection, what is not the selection. And the difficult thing on this palm frond is we have some background of it as well. So I wanna add that in. So just hold plus and let's bring it all the way through. There we go. minus to take out this portion and then plus to add in some of the background you can zoom in a bit too <clears throat> which is always nice for you and for me and while i'm doing this i'm also kind of drawing a little bit you know it can, it's used um, a lot as a drawing tool, this selection tool. I, mean, I can't see my chat. There it is. Hey, Thinker, good morning. Thanks for joining me again. A lot of times it gets hard. You're like, you're not sure what you've selected and what you didn't select. I think there's possibly a way to show a mask, a highlight of what is selected and what is not selected. You know, I didn't check my levels. Testing. Yep. My mic is making sounds for you. <laughs> the technical term. 
my audio is mastered well. So over the weekend, yesterday mainly, because we had the live stream on Saturday, but not on Sunday, I was looking at a lot of dig you know, really amazing digital artists. Uh, one thing I love about ArtStation is there's a lot of artists on there that will show their process. And it'll be, you know, like a quick uh, time lapse or a succession of images collected during the process. And honestly, that's just so helpful for anybody that's wanting to learn, you know, digital painting. And what I saw was, you know, some similarities within processes of creating you know, digital imagery, mainly, you know, kind of concept design and things like that. But there is always, you know, these subtle differences as well. Yeah, this is good training for the selection tool, let me tell you. Just back and forth, alt and shift. Actually, the best training that you can have with anything you undertake is to, you know, do it. Find something you're interested in and then just have fun doing it. The important part is having fun. A lot of times we forget about that part. I'm actually going to add one right here. Yeah, I like that. Now we'll take the same gray tone that we used before and just fill all that in. And let's zoom out and see. Yeah, we just about got the whole thing, I would say. Except for this piece down here, which is not looking the best. Go back to our selection tool. Let's hope I did that. Yep, did that on a, a separate layer. And then we're gonna create a new layer and do the next palm frond. So I was working hard this weekend. Um, got a eye painting tutorial out on my gum road in oil, an eye painting tutorial in oil. And I'm pausing now because I I'm brewing tea on the side and I'm getting ready to pour it. So if you hear any water in the background, actually, I'll probably mute myself for just a moment. So be right back. Yeah, so I worked this weekend really hard on getting that uh, oil painting tutorial out. And this morning I'm working hard on getting the preview video uh, that's gonna go on YouTube for it. Um, working hard on that. So it's, it's made me a bit late this morning on everything. But that's okay. We'll, like always, probably take the stream beyond 
the one hour. Working on this next palm frond. Trying to get some really fluid lines going. Not worrying too much about the exactness of the drawing. See what that looks like. Yeah, I think that works. You know, this we're not we're not looking for being super exact on these these things. What we're what we're doing is just preparing them as separate layers so we can affect you know these this whole section of palm fronds uh, with you know, broad adjustments. So it created another layer and just working to outline this palm frond. As I said before, the difficulty with this freehand selection tool and many selection tools is as soon as you let up, it, you know, kind of snaps back to the start. So you have to make sure that wherever you stop and lift up your stylus or mouse or whatever you're using, uh, that it will snap back to the beginning in such a way that it's helpful for you. <laughs> I missed all those lines. It's hard to see what I'm doing here. So I lift up there and it, we pretty much got that whole section. So I can actually go ahead and fill this in, I'm sure. And then delete that selection. I can, I can remove the tiger selection to see that a bit better as well. And that's fine. Actually, that's really good. Um, what's, what's nice is if, if you do get it wrong, but it still looks okay, you, you just in introducing kind of variation into the palm frond. And nature is perfect at having random variation. Variation that looks weird, but is good because it's nature. <laughs> So what I'll do on this one, I see that that one is a bit too thin, so I'm going to hold shift. There you go, and then fill in that small bit. Yeah, and I'll probably actually add in one at the end here. some trouble with my stream it looks like sorry if you're experiencing some buffering right now I think it's going to be my internet which is pretty good I mean being in Tacoma close to Seattle So why are you filling with gray instead of filling with a local color of the frond? That's a good question. Um, it's a very good question. And I'm not sure, honestly. I'm, I'm really going off of, I looked at an artist that I admire on ArtStation and the way this person really started out things. And they used just a simple gray um, for foreground elements while they worked in the background. And my guess is that 
they didn't want the the gray to affect the background color hmm it was kind of like a placement more than anything like you know an easy way to to remake that selection so if i wanted to reselect the tiger i could hold control and then tap on the tiger um image the little icon in the left hand side just tap on the tiger and it would reselect and then at that point you know i could i could insert a layer and then fill with like an orange oh my goodness yeah stick to the palette so i could fill with an orange of some sort and then kind of maybe work it from there but i i even saw that yeah i'm not sure maybe it, I mean, especially with the frond, why wouldn't we just select it like this one? And then I can select, you know, part of our palette. Oops. I would, I would need to insert over it. It's weird. I can't even... I know I filled with, with green yet. Oh, it's because it's below. It would need to be right here or right there there yeah because it's no it's an opaque gray because our lines are over the top of everything yeah let's do that we're gonna do a couple things we're gonna organize this a bit more um we're gonna call we're gonna do this we're gonna group these two layers and then double tap, call it Tiger. And then I'm going to group this. This is going to be the rock. And the rock's going to be behind the tiger. It's going to be actually behind and in front of the tiger in a couple places. I'm going to call this uh, Palm 1. And then this is going to be Palm 2. I, I like being organized with my layers. I'm not sure if, you know, how others do it, but... I, well, I've seen a lot of uh, artists, they'll work, they'll get most of it done, or they'll get pretty far into it, and then they'll organize their layers. So palm uh, three is on top of the tiger. So in front, we're going to push all the palm one and palm two behind. Yeah, but I'm going to put palm one above palm two. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a palette. So let me zoom in all the way. And this is the palette we're going to work from. So right here is a palette docker, and it's kind of confusing because of the spacing that Krita has. There's not a lot of spacing on this. So I'm on the Chris palette. As you can see there, it's called Chris. Uh, and if I could, if I tap on that little palette icon, I can pick out all these palettes, right? And then I can also hit plus. So I'll hit plus here, and then I can name our new palette, which is Tiger. Well, well, you know it's a painting. I'm just going to put Tiger. Save palette in the current document. Yes. Let's see what that how that works. That'd be kind of interesting. You open the document and the palette comes up. Hopefully that's the way it works. So we can do that. And now if I want to add a color, I would hit this little plus icon. And then I should be able to... Oh, whatever I'm, I'm selected on first so for example i'll pick out this orange and then i'll hit plus and okay next orange plus okay this one okay and then we can quickly do that through all these and get these greens in there There we go. We really don't need the black and white. And then these are so small, I can't even see them. So you can hit this little grid icon here 
and then instead of 16 we can change it to like maybe 10 instead of 20 rows we can just go down to like two or three or yeah three it's a bit bigger let's go larger with it Huh, not why, not sure why they separated on different rows there. But that's kind of annoying. Wow, it separated even further. That was just one there for a second. I'm not sure why it did that. Well, anyway, there's our palette. It's got some blanks in between it. I'm not sure if you can... Oh, you can drag and drop. Well, that's fantastic. But I'm missing some colors. I could have swore that I added some other greens on here. Oh, they're... Wow, that's interesting. So I didn't realize this. You don't even have to hit the plus icon. So let's, let's do this. Um, How do I delete? Okay, delete, 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 delete. So if I want this color here, I can just tap onto the square and it'll save it. And if I hold it and drag it, I can drag it around as well. Ah, I learned something new about the palette. That's really cool. Okay. So. Let's use that palette now. So Palm 2 is the one that we turned green. And the cool thing about it is now that I have that selection, I don't have to worry about making selections in it anymore. I could just lock my transparency, maybe get, you know, a big brush like I have, or a small brush like I have right now. And if I'm trying to paint out here, you won't see anything but I can paint in there. Let me select this color. And am I lying to you? Let's see, red? Yeah, that green was just so close to what I've already put down. Let's try this kind of yellowish green. And probably what we want to do here is get kind of like a, a gradient going on these as well so I can get like a darker color and just add some interest into it I mean most of the time and we could do that a bit easier with uh, just the airbrush brush Just to, you know, pop in a really cool gradient above that. Now, palm one will do the same, but I'll make a selection on the palm, insert a new layer, and then we'll take that same color. I put it in the wrong place. Kind of all over the place today, I feel like. There we go. So that's too dark. That's okay. It was just a fill layer. Let's brighten it up. You know, just kind of getting something there really quickly. This one being actually when I look at my jungle picture, which I have on a different monitor, it has some nice variations to it. 
Let's start with this kind of darkish blue green. Insert a new layer. Actually, let's do it over the whole thing. Dark blue green. Lock that transparency. And then I can even play around with this just a bit. Yeah, just some kind of cool variations within that. And we don't need our little pilot thing anymore on there. Okay, so those are the foreground items. Now it's going to be all about the background, which, let's see, let's create uh, a layer here and then move it down below everything. Group, background, and this is going to be fun because it's just going to be painting. First thing I want to do is really establish kind of some general coloration. And when you establish any kind of colors first, um, you establish any kind of color, really. The first thing you want to focus on is really value. That's the first thing you want to get right. So. I'm looking at this background here, all these trees, these trees that we, we popped in. The problem I see with doing it this way though, is that I will obscure my drawing so much that I can't really tell what's going on. So let's, let's do this. And I do want some hard lines in there, so I'm gonna make a selection of this tree. And then we're just gonna kind of generalize it at the bottom here. This is actually two big trees. You don't see the foreground one, but it come, becomes this big dark block, really. But I will um, add this stick to it. To the selection and then take out this bit. There we go. And we're going to fill it with this dark color. There. And let's do the same thing for this tree here. I'm kind of jiggling my pin around as I'm going down this tree because I want the edge of it to be textured. And just a simple fill on that one as well. And see, almost kind of right away, we're getting. Um, values established for everything. So I can insert another layer. And now this one I want, I'm gonna be looking at some brushes here. I want a lighter color. Yeah, something around that where it's kind of a gray. That's, that's really too blue, honestly. I'm not really liking those blue colors as much. That's a bit better, but it's it's too light as well. So it's it's kind of a warmish green, right? But I, I want to get rid of the saturation in it. So I want to darken it up and desaturate it. 
If I look at the artistic color wheel, it would be a bit helpful. I can see it's like mid saturation. It's where the circle is and I can see the value a bit easier. So I can bring it closer to the center. Maybe one more stop to the center and then down one value scale. And I'm going to work this up with a big brush, probably, let's see, uh, some textured brushes. Because I want some texture in this background. And we're going to start adding in some different kind of colorations back here as well. Because it, it needs some deepness to it. It needs some... Let's go to this color. Because when, when we look at the <clears throat> our image of the jungle, if I bring that down, what I'm looking at. So this is the jungle image and I'm looking at this kind of clearing space here. Oh, hello, Noka. Thinker says, I like the bluer green behind the tiger to make the orange really pop. That's true. That's probably the reason why we picked that, you know, and look, so we can really see that. Why don't we just fill in the tiger with a general, a general idea. So make that tiger selection and then let's, let's pick out one of these darker oranges that we had before. I mean, overall, that's, you know, the saturation on that is just ridiculous. So let's control Z and half saturation, but darker. Yeah. So the one thing, this is the same with oil painting. The one thing that you want to make sure that you do is stay away from your extremes. What do I mean by that? So if, you know, I'll jump back into this background. Uh, if you're oil painting or doing any kind of painting and you, you find your lightest light on here and you, put, you throw that in as white, you have no leverage to go higher than that. You've just kind of maxed out your lightest light. And if you do the same thing with black, like if I made this tree, oops, if I made the tree black, then I would, I would have no variation within that. I've already reached both of my extremes. But then you also want to think about that for each individual I, um, character in your, in your work. So for example, this tiger, I don't want to start with this super saturated orange. I don't have any way to go from there. Okay, if that makes sense. So you you start kind of gray. You start, um, you know, and this is what the artistic color picker is great for that. The only thing I wish it would do that you could do is cut off those extremes, and you can't, like, you know, stop from selecting full white or full black, but what you do is you play within these kind of value ranges. So you, you leave two stops of black and two stops of white. That way later on, if you want that extra little push of a highlight, you have that ability in the white. And if you want that extra little deepness of black, you have that within the black. The same with your color. So if, if I chose, you know, this orange color and I can see like that is really saturated. I would want to make sure that I keep it, you know, this saturation level. I don't want to go full saturation and then same with the value. So I'm here with the value and there with the value. I wouldn't go either one. Uh, I wouldn't go too extreme on either one. So let's, let's go here, you know, mid range. And that's the exact same color it looks like. Let's see. That's a little bit darker. Let's fill that in. 
There we go. So we have so much more room to move. If you compress your value scale and your chroma scale or saturation, which whichever one you want to call it, chroma saturation is the same thing. At least the idea is the same. So let's try, like you said, that bluish green in the background. Let's just fill it, see what happens. select this brush which is kind of an overall painting brush that really fills in things pretty quickly and then we can stay within some variation back here I want a textural brush. This is a brush we made weeks ago. It has some nice texture to it. I need, I need to increase the size of it to get more texture though. Most of the texture that I'm gonna create back here is gonna be based on you know individual strokes, honestly. When I really look, because I'm not even really looking at that image, when I really look at, um, you know, the variation that happens back there. And the one thing I do know is I want to keep the topper, the topper, really, Chris? I want to keep the top side of this tiger, um, like we're around the head lighter, like this lighter area back here. And we're right at that level. I can bring this into a bit more yellow green. There's two ways to play with value. I mean, color is it's wonderful. There's only three things that you have to worry about, but it's like infinite complexity within that, which is amazing. You know, it's a lot of fun, but, um, you can mess with value either in a, you know, black to white scale or in a saturation scale, like a coloration scale. Okay, what do I mean by that? Um, the, like I could stay within the same value range here. So I'm selected on this value, but depending on like how I saturate things, it could look a lot lighter. Look how light that looks because it's more saturated. But if, if I removed all the color from this background, it would, it would blend in because it would, it's basically the same value. So you can really affect you. You have this range of affecting values, not just with, you know, the value itself, but within color and to recognize that, you know, you have that kind of range that you can use is really helpful. Okay, that's enough for just randomness. One thing that's annoying me is that little bit on the drawing layer. It's right in there. Okay, oh, I've got it locked. Just throw back, throw that in real quick. Sorry, that was kind of annoying me. It was distracting. Okay, now how to do, how to paint the randomness of this jungle. And I'm talking about this clearing in between the trees there, this area. Let's see, I have this reference in here, don't I? Yeah. 
I'll just keep it like that. I want to back it off though. I don't want to, if you work from images that are super huge, there's a tendency to think about each individual twig and everything. So best to make the image really small and then work from it like that. That way you, you work on the broader idea of things. Okay. <clears throat> the best brush for this is going to be one where I can get these kind of small layers. These small kind of, there's because there's some hard edges there. And that brush might do it. Let me look at this one. I, need, I wish I had, you know, that brush, but with some texture to it. Not that much texture. Actually, that might be perfect. Actually, I did download uh, David Ravoy's brand new brush set, which looks really awesome. He changed everything with um, coloration. So, and has a, you know, a way of, or he indicates how he uses each of those, like the gold, the blue, the red, this kind of teal color, then green, and how he moves through everything. It's really good. I think I'm going to use one of his brushes. Another thing I can do, and I just thought about this, if I hit, is it control U? So on the image, this image we're working down here, it's, it's a little bit too like yellow green. If I wanted to pick from that, I could take it into this kind of bluer green area. Look how intense that is though. So let's bring down the saturation. Actually, that's the coloration, sorry. Let's bring down the saturation. And that's really close to exactly what we have up here, which is really nice. Um, I should have made that into a mask, but that's okay, not a big deal. And what I can do is I can really just pick from here and it will give me all kinds of different color selections like palettes right away that I can pull from. So let's say that we have kind of a darker area. Wow, that's really dark. And I'm, in the, I'm on the wrong layer. Should be right here. That's almost too dark. Wow, that is... Why is that so extremely saturated still? Let's go back up to the reference and desaturate it even more. And then now let's pick from it and see what we get. really just playing around with the coloration right now, the colors that I'm pulling out here. And then if I, you know, kind of pull from my palette that we've created, how far am I off from that? The palette I created is even more bluish gray. Which is interesting. I 
really kind of wabbling about right now, aren't I? Let's try one more time. Control U. Let's go into the blues with this. Desaturate it even more. And now let's see what we get. sure about where I'm going to take this. Well, let's just go for it. The one thing I do like on this are kind of this, there's some sticks back there that go across areas, but we could, we could use that to our advantage, not just, not just randomness. But keeping it in the in a certain direction that accentuates, you know, where the tiger is. Making a larger brush now so that I can really focus on kind of the broader the broad areas that within here and what I'm thinking that's going to happen is I'll work this up in kind of a, a general background and I really need to zoom out so that we can keep this generalized and not specific uh, and then after I work it that way, put a Gaussian blur over the whole thing, the whole background to really push it back. Cause right now there's just so much texture that it's going to be competing with the tiger. And I can also, let's hide this real quick. Let's create another layer. And I have this darker green selected. It's a little bit darker. So we're right here. How dark is that? Let's change the opacity so we can build it up in layers. We can get that general kind of transition from light to dark right there while we're working and I put that as a separate layer like gradient layer over what I'm working on that will help kind of push back what I'm adding in here keep the values from getting too strong and really just trying to create this randomness that is the jungle. Focusing a little bit more on the darker colors. Oh, that's super dark. See, we're into our uh, value range that I want it to stay away from. I'm going to bring the opacity to my brush down a lot. We can build it up that way a bit more.
just increase that level of variation and interest. And then also within that, while you're, when you have a lower opacity paint that you're working with, you're creating all these other values that you can pull from. So at this point, I'm not even picking from the image any longer. I'm just going to stick within what I've already put down. I'm just kind of feeling out what looks good. I'm doing a lot of squinting as well. You can back up really far, squint down, blur everything with your eyes. It comes to a point where there's probably too much randomness going on. And you need to really kind of figure out what the focus is going to be or bringing some focus back into this. Light to dark, big brush to small brush. And then determining at what point you switch is, you know, the harder part really. you have to leave a little bit early that's that's fine oh, if you're still here <laughs> i'll catch the end of the stream later today good luck thank you thanks so much thanks for showing up sorry i didn't see your message until now <laughs> i was focusing i mean there's just so much randomness back here right for the tiger or for the jungle. And this has always been, you know, the one of the difficulties that I've had with painting, you know, landscapes and things like that is you'll run into situations where it's just so random um, of shapes that it's just, you know, like, where do you start? How do you create that randomness? And make it look like what it's supposed to look like. It's it's like a a random perfection that's really hard to grab. I'm trying to keep the down below a lot darker, but I need more light areas around the tiger head to really set that orange all. Keeping it as gray, as desaturated as we can. And really just playing back here, honestly. Okay. Here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take that layer that I've been working on. Hopefully it's the right one. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I'm going to add a filter to it. Filter, adjust. Oh, actually blur. Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, however you want to say it. And we're going to blur it. You can see right away how, you know, before 
it was really in the foreground and I can show you this again because we're going to create it as a mask. So let's create a filter mask on that. So that's with the Gaussian blur. If I take that off, it's subtle yet not. It really pushes everything back into the background. Uh, and it's giving me an understanding if you know, I've created a convincing kind of jungle in the background. And I, I don't think so. I think it needs more work, honestly. I think what we need out of this is another layer and some bit of exactness. It's, I really need to get that pure ref program back up so that I can always have my reference up really easily but then I'll have to learn how to use it and that's the other thing I'm dealing with okay back to our same brush and I'm going to pull out one of these darker colors and we're going to start with that I'm looking at these kind of sticks and twigs that are back there and we're going to create something that's a bit more just like the jungle. So I'm looking directly at the image and trying to render what I see, like one small spot. And it's hard because you look, you know, if you look away, you look back at it and you're like, wow, where was I at? Because it's just full of nothing but randomness. And I'm gonna go back to the advanced color picker and I'm just gonna darken this up slightly. Don't wanna darken it up too much more. What you're really doing here what we're doing here is looking for you know these kind of generalizations of foliage that have the shape of foliage but is still generalized i know it's kind of it's like what what are you talking about there are particular shapes that are happening back there that it's best to try and grab at least some of them. We're not gonna do this all over the place. How dark is that? See, that's a bit too dark. Bring it down just a bit. We're just gonna add in some of these specific points of interest. likely blur this out as well. background music totally feels like I'm in an elevator hey when you don't have to pay for it when it's copyright free it's not it's not for listening to on a long term basis. <laughs> 
Uh, things you have to deal with when you're making YouTube videos. Going a little bit dark with some of these elements that I'm adding in here. There's a sense of depth that I'm creating as well because I have these harder edges that are going over a background that has a Gaussian blur on it. It's creating some really nice depth. I wanna bring in some of the, these little kind of highlights that hit in places. What you can do here in a lot of ways when you're working on, you know, a, a random, you know, area of organic shapes is you utilize your kind of creative imagination in a lot of ways and think, well, there's going to be maybe a tree in the background, like for example, maybe I'll grab like a darker color and I can really pop this out. Like maybe this is just a really thin tree that's going behind all of this that I just created. And maybe there's an indication of it. And then you're thinking, oh, okay. And then I can see where the light is coming from. And so that tree is going to kind of wrap in a certain way. So it get a little bit lighter of a value. And it's the tree's a cylinder. So I can turn it a little bit better and then throw some highlights on it in places. You kind of think about, you know, leaves and things you know like this is maybe a frond that's back there in the background with a bunch of highlight on it and then you can select a, a darker color to accentuate it a bit more so i'm really thinking about particular objects there's a tendency to to make these areas so nebulous so blurry that they lose all structure you have to remember that, you know, there's, there's going to be structure back here. There's going to be some kind of structure to these things. Like the perfection of nature is completely random, yet you can never say it's wrong. Like even the most uh, blurry looking of tree that doesn't have a lot of structure to it will have some kind of light and dark shapes within it. And it's your job to kind of find that structure, those structural elements, and be able to describe them. Okay, let's remove my... So yeah, that added a bunch of structure back there. It brought a lot of that forward, created some depth. 
it's not complete by any means. I think, you know, it could still use uh, more interest into it. But down here in these bottom areas, we're going to really darken it up in places. We'll get, you know, make a, create a bigger brush or lar make your brush larger. Let me get my reference way out of the way. <clears throat> And I, I want to accentuate this kind of flow of light from above to below. So it starts lighter up here and everything up top has a bit of lightness to it. Are much more light areas to them. And then below, it gets a lot darker. What I need to do is take this light that I have and speckle it in more places. Kind of like, you know, even though the jungle gets thicker as you go down, there are places when the distance still shows through. These little speckles. I'm gonna bring my opacity back up for these. I'm barely looking at my reference now, so let's just get rid of it. Ooh, and I'm going way over my stream time. I have to stay on schedule because I have a job that I have to show up at on time. And it's easy for me to just paint all day. So what I'll do is we did a Gaussian blur on the previous one. I'm gonna do the same with this one. So a blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but we're just gonna do it like a slight one. So like 10 or something like that, just to send that back. And we're gonna create a filter mask. Just very subtle difference there. Yeah, that's not too bad. There's a lot of interest back there. But as soon as we get into all of the coloration for the tiger, um, it's going to really pop the tiger out because it's a very cool background area. Cool as in closer to blue. And what's great about it, because it's on a, a different layer, I could, um, I could merge all of those and do any kind of filters to them and change it in many different ways all at once. Uh, th that's the true power of digital painting is being able to select an entire area and then just change the color of it all at once. Yeah, so that's the first day of the tiger painting, actually painting on it uh, tomorrow we will continue on with this. So I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>